and I know you are not practicing law. So can you tell us? <laughs> can you tell us about that experience? Why are you not practicing I law? Every time you're a freaky lawyer, why are you not practicing? When did you get called to the bar, Joy? I got called to the bar in June. And is that the Ontario Bar? Yes. Joy, a lot of internationally trained lawyers have said that the, they found the bar exams very difficult. How was your experience with the bar exams? I think everyone finds it difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so we can get our students. Um, I think, personally, the, the, the biggest trouble I had in the bar exam was studying for the bar exam. <laughs> and were you working? That was the worst part. Were you working? Um, yes, I was working full time all through. Even with SEA, I was working full time. And so I think that was part of the challenge as well because, you know, you have a 95 job and you have to come back home to read this book. <laughs> page material. It's, it's, it was a lot. But I think the struggle was studying for the exam. I, I thought the exam was... Um, <laughs> and did you write the two at once? No, so I wrote um, the first one, which was Barrister. I wrote Barrister in November 2018, mm -hmm. and I wrote the Solicitor in was it February or January, like the first, the first design in 2019. So I had to get to space because I was working. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember that I, I probably studied for three months in advance. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you. <laughs> The first two months was a waste because I read the materials back to back and I was as I was flipping the page, everything was flying out. <laughs> like I couldn't retain anything. Mm. So what really helped me, and then this literally happened like a month to the exam, was just going through materials. And I, I was sharing my experience with you right now. Uh, this was just going through past questions. Going through past questions. Sorry, going through past questions that helped me a huge deal, and that also helps you remember because you're going through a thousand material. How do you remember these things? Mm. Going through back past questions seeing like-minded or you know, seeing similar questions and being able to apply the materials to the question helps and it sticks and that was what I did. I think I answered, I was just looking for random questions, random questions, even questions all the way to 2000, year 2000, year 2001. I just wanted to make sure I understood the materials with the questions and that helped. And did you feel any, did you feel any of the exam? No. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know. Um, yeah, it, it was God's grace. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so just going through, honestly, going through past questions. And my advice to anyone writing the exam is just go through the materials maybe once, mm -hmm. and just have your index. Make sure you understand your index as well going through past questions. You know what? Answering past questions make you understand and know your index you become mm. more familiar with your index that's to answer true questions. that's true so if you're answering almost ten thousand questions mm -hmm. with your index mm -hmm. the one you're taking to the exam yeah what is 200 questions in the exam like that's it's, true it's a grace for you and the good thing about going through past questions is some of them are repeated that's true and even in the exam the questions will be similar and you're like oh yeah 14 days notice whatever you would remember and you don't even have to go to the index or material you just answer off hand and I know you are not practicing law. So can you tell us? <laughs> can you tell us about that experience? Okay. Why are you not practicing I get law? That question every time <laughs> you're a freaky lawyer, why are you not practicing? A lot of people are actually passionate about law, which is amazing. It's fantastic. Um, but I think more importantly, what I what I really enjoy is the experience, the the analytical thinking and skill you get from law, which which I've applied in everything I do, like even in my personal life. So um, I do not practice law. Um, that, that's just my personal choice. <laughs> um, I love what I currently do. I mean, I mean, um, financial industries. I'm also in, I'm in fintech, and I love it. So that is what I'm doing. That's what I'm passionate about. Um, so that's I have applied law in fintech. I do all the time. I go through contracts with vendors and all of that. Um, you can apply law everywhere, which is what I've been doing. So I do not practice law. Um, do I get other contracts or you know side businesses for friends? I need lawyers. I do. <laughs> That's probably why I'm keeping my license. <laughs> but I do not practice law full time. Yeah. So it's possible to you know still get called to bar, go to law school, yeah, you know, and not have to practice law. Yes, because it actually changes everything. Mm -hmm. It changes the way you think. It changes the way you see things mm -hmm. politically, um, socially. It 
one in your like in every area mm-hmm. you can, can apply law. Mm-hmm. So you really don't have to, you know, work in a law firm, yeah. work in the government, mm-hmm. um, go to courts to be a lawyer, you mm-hmm. know. Joy, do you have any advice for internationally trained lawyers who are looking to move to Canada and explore other options, you know, aside from law? Hmm. I would say it's really up to you if you want to, you know, continue the process to become a lawyer here. It's really up to you. It's a personal choice. Um, but I would say find your passion. What do you love doing? And, um, and I think generally, not just law, but if you're going to be... Um, moving fields it's always that um, it's always that extraness you have to bring you know you you don't have to be in the passion because you don't have the experience right it's a new field you're moving to so it's it's not having the passion having some sort of skills that you can um, you can that that, can, that that is relatable to whatever food you're getting into. Joy, so we know that you're very adventurous and you like traveling a lot. <laughs> we know that you you enjoy you know traveling and doing other things aside from work. Yeah. So can you tell us about some of your hobbies, some of the trips you have you have done in the past? I love extreme sports. <laughs> so. And it's funny because I actually have a fear of heights and I've done every crazy thing you can think of. But yeah, I love being adventurous. I love, I love living on the edge. Um, can you give us examples? Oh, okay. So, I, by the time this video is out, I'm probably not to swim then. <laughs> but um, I do not know how to swim right now. And I actually died in the Red Sea. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the only place I could take a non-swimmer and a non-certified diver. Wow. So I got this local to actually go with me to the Red Sea and we went, I think we went about 20 feet with like a tank and everything and I couldn't swim. Were you not float. scared? <laughs> I, you know what, I wasn't, I wasn't that scared. Like, looking back now, I was like, shoot, anything could have happened. But I guess I, I was just, I was like, you know, I had the gas, I had everything. I had excited. The things, I had, so I was like, it doesn't matter. Wow. Fine. <laughs> wow. Just leave it at the edge. I, I love it. I mean, life is short. So mm. you, you just have to enjoy what you do. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I just love traveling. I love mm. doing that. So how many countries have you traveled to? Um, I've not really been. I just started traveling, actually, last mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think just exploring even Ontario. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we've done a lot of uh, road trips. Again. Yes, yes, we yeah. have. <laughs> Thank you so much, Joy, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It was such a pleasure Thank having you. It was so you. much fun recording with you. Yeah, a good time. Thank, Thank you. you. And uh, can they reach out to you if they have any questions for you? Yeah, sure. If you have any questions about my experience um, as an immigrant or even after to claim or not to claim the exemption process and even my transition to fintech or even about fintech as well just put your questions down below in the comment section or you can even email more and show it back to me joy's got you i got you <laughs> <laughs> also joy has a uh, a travel account on instagram because she travels a lot and uh, she helps people plan their trips as well i do send me an email um she'll put the link down below for you um send me an email like plan trips for people based on your project so depending on the kind of if you want, if you want adventure, you want cultural experience or culinary experience, I want everything for you, your budgets to any country. She's always one planning on that trip. So yeah. <laughs> Anyways, thank you again for joining thank us. You. If you guys haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Click on the red button <laughs> below. And uh, if you're not following me on Instagram, please follow me. My handle is moyosara underscore B. And my name on LinkedIn is moyosara balogo. I will see you guys in the next episode of Ask Mo. Bye.